Hi, this is Tammy McClish. Let's take a look at radiographic abdomen positioning. Now, whenever you are x-raying the abdomen, keep in mind that you want to see all of the abdominal contents or the abdominal viscera. Now, a lot of times a physician will order an AP flat plate or an AP supine abdomen or just an abdomen x-ray. Sometimes a physician will call this picture a KUB, which means kidneys, ureters, and bladder. What you really need to keep in mind is that you want to have the diaphragm on top and you want to have the symphysis pubis on bottom. When you look at this picture here, you can see underneath the diaphragm we have all of the abdominal organs or the abdominal viscera. And ab above the symphysis pubis, which is the pubic bone, we have all of the abdominal viscera, especially the bladder. So whenever you're x-raying a patient for an abdomen, make sure that you are x-raying them from the diaphragm all the way down to the symphysis pubis. Now when you're x-raying an abdomen, you want to make sure that your KVP is anywhere between 70 KVP to 80 KVP. Now if you're x-raying a child, then you can utilize much lower KVPs. And that's because of the fact that pediatrics will utilize tabletop exposures, and those tabletop exposures do not have a grid. So any tabletop exposure that is taken could be 69 KVP and lower. Usually it's down to about 50 KVP. But if you are using a grid on an adult patient, your KVP levels need to be between 70 KVP to 80 KVP. You want to make sure that your time of exposure is short, but you want to make sure that your milliamps per second are adequate for sufficient patient density. Now the best way to x-ray an abdomen is to make sure that you are measuring the abdomen every time you x-ray patients and start a technique chart. When you're doing that, what you want to do is you want to put the patient in position put the measuring device at the central ray, and then just keep documenting for how many centimeters do I use a specific MAS. The rule for abdomen is to keep the KVP constant and to manipulate your milliamps per second. And when you're manipulating your milliamps per second, you wanna make sure that you have as short of an exposure as possible. The source to image distance will be 40 inches, and you need to center to the image receptor. Anytime you are using digital imaging systems, make sure that you center to the center of the IR and you closely collimate. If you are doing those two things, you're going to find that your images are going to be much better than if you are not centering and collimating. Now, when you are shielding, all radiosensitive tissues outside the abdomen anatomy of interest should be shielded. For males, you want to use gonadal shielding on all males of reproductive age with the upper edge of the shield placed at the symphysis pubis, unless, of course, it obscures the essential anatomy. For females, you want to use gonadal shielding on all females of reproductive age if it does not obscure the essential anatomy. An ovarian shield can be placed at or slightly above the level of the ASIS, which is the anterior superior ischial spine, and the lower border just above the symphysis pubis. Now you want to check to see if your patient is potentially pregnant. We cannot expose abdomens on patients that are potentially pregnant. If they are potentially pregnant, you need to talk to the physician or the radiologist to see what you need to do with this particular patient. Now sometimes physicians are going to order what is called an acute abdomen, and that means you take an AP supine abdomen, an AP erect abdomen, and a PA chest. If the physician orders a two-way or a two-view abdomen, then you want to make sure that you are going to position the patient for an AP supine abdomen and an AP erect abdomen. Here are the seven landmarks of the abdomen. Number one is the xiphoid process, which is at the level of the ninth thoracic to the 10th thoracic vertebrae. Number two is the inferior costal margin, which is at the level of L2, L3. Three is the iliac crest, which is at the level of the fourth lumbar to the fifth lumbar vertebral interspace. Four is the anterior superior iliac spine, or the ASIS. Five is the greater trochanter. Six is the symphysis pubis, and seven is the ischial tuberosity. 
Okay, let's take a look at the most common x-ray that a doctor will order if they are going to be ordering an abdomen x-ray. So we can call this an AP supine x-ray or a KUB. And remember that KUB means kidneys, ureters, and bladder. You're going to have the patient lying down on the table. They're going to be supine with their arms and legs at their side. There should be no rotation. And to check that, you want to make sure that the ASIS on both sides are equal distance from the tabletop. And you want to make sure that you center your central ray perpendicular to the center of the image receptor, which should be at the level of the iliac crest on adults. When you're looking at your x-ray, you want to make sure that you have an outline of the liver, spleen, psoas muscles, and kidneys to include the symphysis pubis of the lower abdomen. No rotation. Symmetry of iliac wings and outer lower rib margins. Optical density and contrast to visualize the psoas muscles and lumbar transverse processes. And of course, no motion. And the best way to obtain no motion is to have the patient take in a big breath, blow it out, and keep it out. Here is an abdomen AP erect. The patient is standing with their back against the image receptor, arms at the sides. You want to make sure there is no rotation. Now when I center my image receptor, I tell the patient, you're going to feel the board move behind you so that they know that it's moving up or moving down. The center ray needs to be horizontal to the center of the IR, which is going to be about two inches above the iliac crest. When we're looking at the x-ray, we want to make sure that we have hemidiaphragms and a significant portion of the abdomen, the lower abdomen. No rotation, symmetry of the iliac wings and the outer lower rib margins. Optical density and contrast to visualize the psoas muscle and the lumbar transverse processes. And if the patient has air fluid levels, we want to see those. So when we are x-raying the patient for an AP erect abdomen, we want to have them standing for several minutes. Now most textbooks say five minutes, but we want to have them standing for several minutes. That way we can make sure that if any air is in the abdomen, it can rise. So we want to give it time to rise. And you want to make sure, of course, there's no motion. So have the patient take in a breath, blow it out, and keep it out. Now here is another x-ray, and sometimes we just call this a decube, but it is a lateral decubitus x-ray of the patient that is AP. Sometimes we are going to take these with the patient PA, but in this picture you will see in the patient AP. It's sometimes difficult to get the image receptor close to the patient if they're PA because their elbows and their knees are in the way. So that's why this picture here is showing you with the patient AP. You want to make sure that the patient is on their side and they always, always, always have to be on their left side. You want to make sure that the knees are partially flexed and the arms are up near the head. You want to adjust the patient and the stretcher so the center of the image receptor and table are about two inches above the iliac crest. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you include the diaphragm. Now, if I was not going to see a picture of a symphysis pubis, this is the picture I would go for. You always, always, always have to see the diaphragm on this particular x-ray. The reason you were doing that is because you are looking for free air. So you want to adjust the image receptor to ensure that the upside of the abdomen is included on the image receptor for possible free air. It's best to get both sides, but if you can only x-ray one side, make sure that you are x-raying the side that is up because we would be looking for free air underneath that diaphragm. Once again, when you're moving the image receptor up or down, tell the patient that you're going to be moving the board behind their back. When you are looking at the x-ray, you want to make sure that the abdomen is visualized to include the air-filled stomach and bowel and upside diaphragm. No rotation, symmetry of the iliac wings and spine is straight. Optimal density and contrast to visualize the soft tissue structures and lumbar spine. And the soft tissue structures in any intraperitoneal air is demonstrated on patients of average size with no motion. Now here is an x-ray that we rarely take. This is called the dorsal decubitus lateral x-ray. When you are x-raying the patient, make sure they are supine with their side against the table, arms above the head, center the image receptor and table 
so it is about two inches above the level of the iliac crest. Once again, this is another x-ray that you need to see the diaphragms. You don't need to really see the symphysis pubis on this x-ray. Central ray is horizontal to the center of the IR, and the table is in the table is adjusted to two inches above the iliac crest at the mid-coronal plane. When you're looking at the x-ray, you want to make sure that the abdomen is visualized to include the hemidiaphragms. There is no rotation. There is symm symmetry of the iliac wings and diaphragm. The intervertebral body should be visualized, and you should have optimal density and contrast to visualize the soft tissue structures and lumbar spine. The soft tissue structures in any intraperitoneal air is demonstrated on patients of average size with no motion. Once again, you want the patient in this position for a few minutes before you actually take this x-ray. And finally, let's take a look at pediatrics. This is an AP supine abdomen. The child is supine. We have immobilized the arms above the head and immobilized the legs. The best way to immobilize these appendages are by using sandbags. Now we can use parental assistance if necessary, but the parent has to not be pregnant and needs to be wearing a lead apron. The central ray for infants and young children will be one inch above the umbilicus. And for children that are older, we are going to have the central ray to the level of the umbilicus. Now we never use the umbilicus when we're x-raying adults because it does tend to move on adults. But in pediatrics, we can go ahead and use the umbilicus as a landmark. When you're looking at the x-ray, you want to make sure that the soft tissue and gas filled structures are on the image. Diaphragm to the symphysis pubis are included if possible. And you want to make sure the optical density and contrast to visualize soft tissue structures and skeletal structures with no motion. Here is an erect abdomen x-ray of a pediatric patient. The child is standing. Arms are at the sides. Once again, use parental assistance if necessary and make sure they are wearing lead and not pregnant. Infants and young children, the central ray can be to one inch above the umbilicus. And on older children, the central ray could be to the level of the umbilicus. When you're looking at the x-ray, you want to make sure there are soft tissue and gas filled structures. Air fluid levels on the erect. Diaphragm to symphysis pubis are included if possible and optical density in contrast to visualize the soft tissue structures and skeletal structures with no movement. Have a good day.